Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with quick cooking tips, know-how, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Now, it's all about real fast food. Real fast food should always grab your attention with big, gutsy flavors, fantastic aromas, and be immediately satisfying. It should also be easy to make and quick to cook. And real fast food doesn't get much faster than my first dish. Chicken stir fry with rice noodles. Some of the best street food I've ever eaten was in Asia. Every one of those little markets was filled with smells of delicious food that all centered around an Asian staple, noodles. Learn to cook those properly, and you'll be surprised how quick and easy it is to knock off a delicious dinner. First off, we're going to soak our noodles. Now, these are rice noodles into a bowl and just pour the hot water over the rice noodles. Soak and rehydrate. 12 to 15 minutes to soften up. If you've got a wok, perfect. If not, just a normal size frying pan with big sloping sides. Pan on. Get it really nice and hot. Chicken breast, very lean, hardly any fat. On there, you've got this little fillet. Just slice that off. Now, the secret to getting it really nice and thin and to cut it into strips, take your knife, keep it nice and flat on the board and sort of slice it in half, like a sort of scallop, like that. We call this butterfly in the chicken. Take a rolling pin and nice and gently roll over the chicken. And what it does, it sort of flattens it, allows you to slice it even thinner. And the thinner the slice of the chicken, the sort of crisper it gets, the quicker it cooks. Slice it in half. Just start slicing these nice, thin slices. And the good news is, one chicken breast can serve two or three easily. Next, wash your knife and finely slice garlic. The thinner the garlic, the crispier. This is a young, tender, Broccoli. Just slice them down. I want a bite to the broccoli. And normally you sort of paste the dish with one third noodles, one third vegetables, and one third of your protein, chicken. With a dish that takes literally minutes to put together, it's really important to get everything organized. Everything needs to be at your fingertips. A touch of olive oil. Get that pan really nice and ready. Just starting to smoke. Drop the chicken in first. Touch of salt, pepper. Open up those little strands of chicken. Nice. Once you've started to sear off the chicken, get the garlic in. Now, let that get really nice and crispy. And the way to do it is to sort of spread all the chicken and the garlic up the side of the pan. You can see why it's so important to cut the chicken into thin strips, because it colours and cooks at the same time as well. Really, really crucial. Now that garlic's getting really nice and crispy. Broccoli in. Feels strange putting raw broccoli in like that. Normally, we blanch it in boiling water, dry it out, but you want that crunch. Now, soy sauce. That helps to season it, but also stains beautifully. Soy sauce in. Lovely. That's exactly what I want. Now, take that out. Give your pan a little wipe out. A little teaspoon of olive oil. Get that wok really nicely oiled again. Drain your noodles. They're beautiful. This is a really exciting way of finishing this quick stir fry. Very classic. Two eggs in. Whisk up the eggs and give that a really good whisk. Sort of almost spread it up the side of the pan. Lightly season the eggs, noodles in, chicken and broccoli in. And give that a really nice mix. You want the egg to sort of almost bring the dish together. 
that egg's cooked. Make sure you've got that nice, even distribution of chicken, broccoli, garlic. Lovely. And then just finish that, that fresh lime. And there you have a very simple, delicious stir-fry with rice noodles. Noodles are a fast food staple, and they come in all shapes and sizes. They're so easy to cook, healthy, but really delicious. Here are three effortless recipes that are ready literally in minutes. First up, noodle soup with poached egg and spring onions. Add miso paste to boiling water. Japanese miso has a wonderful, deep, savoury richness and is brilliant in soups. Grate in fresh ginger. Add dry shiitake mushrooms that have been soaked in water. Season with soy sauce. Crack an egg, add it to the broth and poach for two to three minutes. Add thinly sliced portobello mushrooms to a serving bowl. Put in fresh medium egg noodles, which will heat through in the hot miso broth. Add spinach. Then simply spoon the broth into your bowl. Top with the egg and fresh chopped spring onions. So simple, so good and so delicious. Ready in 10 minutes, super fast noodle soup with poached egg and spring onions. My next easy dish using the versatile noodle is stir-fried pork noodles. First, marinade pork mince in Shaoxing rice wine, a fortified Chinese wine, soy sauce and sesame oil. Next, fried chopped ginger in hot olive oil and garlic. Next, Add Szechuan peppercorns, which have a wonderful lemony flavor and gives a pleasant tingling sensation. Now, add your marinated pork mince and brown. If you want more seasoning, add extra soy sauce. Then add fiery chili bean paste and rice wine vinegar. Add in cooked egg noodles. Mix together. Finally, Top with chopped spring onion and toasted sesame seeds. Packed with flavour and on the table in 15 minutes. Delicious stir-fried pork noodles. My next noodle dish you can knock up in no time is noodles with chilli, ginger and lemongrass. Add chopped onions to hot olive oil, garlic, chili and fry. Grate in ginger. Next, lemongrass. First bash it with a knife. Doing this will help release its wonderful lemony flavor and scent. Now, aromatic kaffir lime leaves. Then ground cumin, coriander and turmeric. Next, add cream coconut, chicken stock, fish sauce, and simmer. Soak rice vermicelli noodles in hot water. Drain and add to your serving bowl. Pour over the aromatic soup broth. Finish with coriander and chopped chili. On the table, in around 20 minutes, noodles with chili, ginger and lemongrass, real fast food. Fast, healthy, delicious, three mouth-watering recipes guaranteed to help you master the art of incredible tasting noodles. Next, five more of my 100 top tips to make your home cooking easier. First up, how to join a chicken for your favorite real fast food dishes. Open up the legs and just pierce the skin there. Careful not to cut into the breast. And hand on top of the breast and pull 
the drum back, pop out, and then slice the knife straight across. There's the thigh, there's the drum. Get your thumb and feel the joint. And with the weight of the knife, just slices through. Now, two beautiful thighs. Now, a bit of a chef's tip, halfway down the drum, just slice through onto the bone. And then from there, scrape up the tendons. And then hand down, nice and firm on top. Now, look at this beautiful bone presentation. As it cooks, it cooks evenly. Now, pull out the wing. Feel where the end of the joint is and just slice in there. Through. A beautiful, big, whole, delicious wing. Now, this is the Rolls-Royce part. Two breasts, that's the breast bone there. Place the chicken on the board and then just slice down at the back of the crown. Everyone always cuts around. Just tilt it upwards straight through. That way, we get straight to the centre of the carcass and therefore there's no waste. And look, we end up taking off his plump chicken breasts. Nice. Two drums, two thighs, two wings, two breasts of chicken and one amazing carcass for a stock and not an ounce of waste. A great tip to stop your skewers burning when you're making kebabs is to soak them in water first. Or for skewers with added flavour, strip your rosemary branches of their leaves and use instead. For no fuss marinating, my tip is to place fish or meat in a plastic storage bag while they marinate. It's easy to store and there's less cleanup. Lime juice or lemon juice make great marinades. My tip for getting maximum amount of juice from a lemon or lime is to roll it hard under your palm for a minute before juicing. Lemons are also useful for rice. Add a couple of drops of juice while you cook it to keep your grains looking nice, white and bright. This is my ultimate cookery course. 100 recipes to stake your life on. I'll be showing you how to make mouth-watering burgers with a difference. Pork is perfect for a slider, but I want a little bite in there. But first, my guide to getting the best ingredients for your money. Whether I'm knocking up fast food or planning a feast, I want my dishes to be the tastiest they can be. And to do that, I always start with the best ingredients I can get. My shopping mantra is very simple. Knowledge is crucial. The more you know personally about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So, ask lots of questions and learn. Here's a quick rundown of the six most useful vinegars and what you can do with them. All make great, fast and easy dressings, with the exception of malt vinegar. Use this for pickling or splashing on your fish and chips. Tangy red wine vinegar is great for marinades, red meats and calves liver. White wine vinegar is good for sweet and sour recipes as well as butter sauces. Cherry vinegar, nutty and virgin on the sweet side. It's perfect splashed into gazpacho or teamed with sweet seasoned veg like asparagus or artichokes. While cider vinegar, tart and fruity, is ideal for pickling fruit and for vegetable chutneys. Rice vinegar is an essential for Chinese and Japanese dishes and is lovely and mild in flavour. Balsamic vinegar, widely considered as the king of vinegars, is the one I use time and time again. Dark and syrupy, its sweet and sharp taste is a great addition if you're frying juicy steaks or chops in marinades or on fresh sweet strawberries. Like fine wine, the price reflects the time it's been matured, anywhere between three and 25 years. Look out for the stamp to make sure you're getting the genuine article from Italy's modern region. You can pay up to 200 quid for just 100 mils of top quality balsamic vinegar like this one. And if you do splash out on one of the fine types, you'll have to taste it to believe it. There's a wealth of classic fast food dishes we know and love, from hot dogs and kebabs to tacos and burgers. But the great thing about making them at home is you can throw away the rule book and get creative. My next easy recipe is a miniature version of an American favorite, the burger. Smoky pork sliders with barbecue sauce. Everyone loves a burger. 
they're a true fast food original. And that's the exciting thing about street food. You can take an old classic like that and reinvent it into something really exciting. When you think of a burger, what you need is a great sauce. And a light, smoky barbecue goes hand in glove with a great burger. Start by finely chopping one onion and three cloves of garlic. Nice hot pan, tablespoon of olive oil, onions and garlic into the pan. Nice seasoning, salt and pepper. Now, the secret of a good barbecue sauce is that really important caramelization to begin with. A nice tablespoon of brown sugar. It darkens the onions, but it really starts to sort of give that nice syrupy body to the sauce. I'll put a little bit of heat in there now. A nice teaspoon of smoked paprika. That's the important part of working with spices. You've got to cook them out and almost sort of burn off that rawness, especially with the smoked paprika. That's exactly where I want it to go. Onions and garlic, beautifully caramelized. Side of vinegar in. Reduce that down. Now, I've got a fantastic smoky base. To complete the sauce, I'm making my life really easy and adding pre-made Worcester sauce and tomato ketchup. Cook that out for two to three minutes. Now, depending on how thick you like the barbecue sauce, that determines how long you cook it out for. I don't want it to be too runny, but I don't want it to be too thick either. That's the consistency we're looking for. Mm. Lovely. Turn down the gas. Touch of seasoning. Now, take that out. It's the kind of sauce that I like to have sort of bottled up in the fridge. It's great for sandwiches, but goes brilliantly well with these sliders. Homemade, smoky barbecue sauce. Get the pan a little wipe. Now, start the mix for the sliders. To give my mix a really interesting flavor and texture, I'm going to be using unsmoked back bacon. I travel all over the world and I spent a lot of time in the States, they know how to make a great slider. Pork sliders, beef sliders, chicken sliders. And it's almost like a way of having a burger, but on a much smaller, miniature level. A little teaspoon of olive oil. I want that bacon to get really nice and crispy. Bacon in. This just gives it a really nice sort of chunky, delicious mix. I want texture and pork is Perfect for a slider. And chop your shallot. Shallots are a lot sweeter than your normal white onion. Fine, fine, fine. And in. Now that bacon's getting really nice and crispy, I want a bit of heat in there. Put a little teaspoon of smoked paprika in there. And when you see these sliders in the States, for one portion, there's like four or five of them. Little mini one-biters. Incredible. Now, take your pork, just open it up, and give that a really nice seasoning. So important. You can't season a slider after you've cooked it. It's impossible. So, season it nicely. Bake it. Now, that's nice and crispy. Just take a little touch, kitchen roll and just drain that off there. Nice. Pat that nice and dry. I want all that nice sort of crispiness in there. Beautiful. Mix all that in. Take a nice ball and sort of roll it. Size of a golf ball. Get it nice and round first, and then three fingers. Just pat that down. Don't flatten them too thin, otherwise they overcook and they go sort of dry. Because sliders are bite-sized burgers designed to go in small buns, you don't want to make them too big. Good. Get the pan nice and hot. A tablespoon of olive oil. When a slider is literally that thick, about an inch thick, you're going to take two and a half to three minutes each side. In. Turn them over. Lovely. Once you've turned them, tilt the pan and just spoon all that juice back into them. 
Even my mouth's watering now. It's very easy to dry the pork out. So just feeling it now, your fingers is nice and firm. A little touch of springiness in the center. I'm happy with those. Add your cheese now so it gets nicely melted. I'm using wedges of smoked cheddar. And it adds that nice sort of soury, smoky creaminess to the slider. Finally, shred a baby gem lettuce. And just take those buns, make sure they're sliced nice and evenly. Take your lettuce, be quite generous with the lettuce. Just a nice thin slice of tomato. Take your burgers. You see that cheese? You think melted. Your barbecue sauce. Mm. Place the top on. And that is my version of a slider that is small, dynamic, but packed full of flavor. I'll take that over a hamburger any day. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course, packed with quick cooking tips, know-how, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, this is my guide to amazing home-cooked street food classics. Street food gets its name because it's cooked and eaten on the streets. From the hawker markets in Asia to the New York hot dog stands, there are some great chefs out there serving seriously delicious food that you can eat on the go. My first recipe is a special mix of fantastic flavors from around the world. Beef tacos with wasabi mayo. The great thing about street food is anything goes. The only rule is they've got to be really fast and really tasty. Now, these tacos mix a Mexican and Japanese flavors into a delicious meaty mouthful. First off, get that pan really nice and hot. These are sirloin steaks. Sear it in the pan with all that fat on. It'll add flavor. Salt and pepper. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil in. Pan, nice and hot. Hold up the steak and lay it in. Always lay away. Give the pan a little shake and it stops the steak from sticking. We're looking for color. But if it sticks, it's gonna burn. While the steaks are cooking, I can go on with my super quick marinade. Now, two tablespoons of miso paste. That's a fermented soybean. That gives a really nice sort of rich sweetness. A tablespoon of sugar, a couple of tablespoons rice wine. That gives it a really nice vinegary kick. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil, salt and pepper. I'm looking for a nice sort of thick, rich marinade. Marinade done, it's time to turn the steaks. Fill the pan and to give the steaks a little base. All we're doing every time is just adding more and more flavor. Take your tongs and sort of lift the steak on its back and really melt all that fat down. Off with the gas. Take them out. Just take your knife. See all that fat there? Just slice that off. I don't want any of that. Now, in to the marinade. Beautiful. Tacos are one of Mexico's most popular street foods. They can be made from beef, pork, chicken or fish and are loaded up with amazing sauces and spices. Now, I want something sort of pickly. Cabbage. These are um, Chinese cabbages. Slice it in half. And look at it. Really crisp and really tasty. We're going to slice that into quarters and then just shred it and take your time. Think of cabbage here and you think of sort of braised, overcooked cabbage. 
It's nothing worse. But an attacker, you want freshness. A little season of chili flakes. They sort of discreetly give it a little bit of heat. A little touch of rice wine vinegar. If you haven't got that, fresh lemon juice. A small drop of toasted sesame seed oil. Give that a really good mix. Now I need something to sort of bring it together. We take some wasabi paste, very hot, very spicy, a sort of thumbnail size. I'm gonna mix that with a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise. You give that a really good mix. These are basic corn tortilla. The trick is to sort of color them and then shape them, actually place it on the gas ring. Use some tongs so as not to burn yourself. You can also toast your tacos in a frying pan. From there, I'm just going to place it on the rolling pin. Literally 30 seconds as it cools down. The great thing about serving tacos is people can fill them themselves just the way they want them. Cabbage. Just squeeze out wet marinade. Make a nice, rustic little mountain. Mayonnaise on. Wait, you see how soft and delicious and almost sort of melting in the mouth texture we've got from this amazing sirloin. So got that really nice sear around the outside. It's just nice and pink in the middle. Start off with my crispy shell. Back of the spoon with the wasabi mayonnaise inside the taco. And just sprinkle that delicious pickled cabbage. And then just start lining my taco with three or four slices. Touch more of my spicy mayo. And that is how I'd make the perfect taco. When you want comfort food quick, fast food classics always deliver. Here are three more of my street food favorites. All super easy, but still put the gourmet into grab and go. This street food dish packs a wonderful Indian influence. Subtly spiced chicken wrap. Grab a mortar and pestle to make a spicy marinade for the chicken. Crack open cardamom pods and add. Brown ginger, coriander, cinnamon, grated nutmeg, cloves of garlic, fresh coriander, lemon juice, olive oil, and season. Now pulverize to form a paste. Pour over the chicken thighs and leave to marinate for up to two hours. To cook, griddle on a high heat to get wonderfully charred meat. Once the chicken is cooked, warm through tortilla wraps on the same griddle. Then simply slice your chicken and put your wrap together. Top with shredded cabbage, chopped spring onion, and your favorite chili sauce. Ready in 20 minutes, sticky, succulent, and utterly Moorish spiced chicken wrap. You'll find my next fast food classic all over America. Tasty chili dogs. For super quick and easy beef chili, add chopped onions to hot olive oil and cook until soft. Then add chopped garlic, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, and stir to release their lovely aromatic flavor. Next, chili powder. Turn up the heat and break beef mince into the pan. Brown and season. Add tomato puree and cook through. Next, a lug of spicy Worcestershire sauce. Chopped in tomatoes, dried oregano, add a sprinkle of sugar, cook frankfurter or bratwurst sausages bung in a bun, and simply top with a spicy beef chili. 
Easy and irresistible. A dog worth crossing the street for. My third street food inspired recipe is Vietnamese style baguette with beef. Start slicing sirloin steak into strips. Then simply marinate in soy sauce, the salty. And runny honey, the sweet. And leave for up to two hours. Then thread your marinated beef strips onto skewers. And pan fry in hot olive oil. For the topping, which adds a lovely sour contrast, grate carrot and simply leave to pickle in rice vinegar. Next, make the easy dressing. Simply de-seed and chop a chili. Add caster sugar and lime juice. Add a glug of fish sauce. Slice a baguette. When lovely and brown, the marinated steak skewers are done. Remove and add. Top with a pickled carrot. Add cool sliced cucumber. Drizzle over the spicy dressing. And to finish it off, add coriander leaves. Simple to make, but complex in flavour. Absolutely delicious. Three stunning recipes from the streets to your home, guaranteed to take food on the run to a whole new level. And so simple to do. You don't need to spend a fortune on masses of kitchen equipment. Here's my quick guide to another cooking essential. Frying pan. For me, one of my favourites. Why? Because it's so versatile. Whether you're searing the most amazing rack of lamb, cooking duck breast, sautéing chicken, or even a quick omelette, or even frying an egg, all in one. Look for an oven-proof frying pan with a metal handle if you want to cook like pros, by finishing off your dish in the oven or under a hot grill. Just don't forget, when you take it out, the handle will be hot. If you can, get a high-quality non-stick one with a thick, heavy base, which will distribute the heat evenly. Brilliant. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. Next, on my guide to street food, I'll be whipping up an indulgent, finger-licking treat. That is amazing. But first... Like any passionate chef, I want the best ingredients I can find, whether it's for savoury or sweet dishes. Next up, my guide to buying chocolate. Chocolate gives you such an instant hit. It's well worth knowing about the good stuff. And who better to ask than award-winning alchemist of the sweetest kind, Paul Young. Even when I don't want to think about it, I'm thinking about it. His cutting-edge approach to chocolate making has won him accolades around the world. So when you're out shopping, the best way is to look at your chocolate bar, look on the back and look at the percentage. That gives you how much cocoa is in the bar. And the more cocoa, the more rich, intoxicating flavour. So the most exciting bit is tasting chocolate. Good quality fine chocolate should have that clean snap. Bite a piece off and crunch it in your teeth. But stop chewing. Let it melt. Move it around the mouth and you'll find that by letting it melt, even dark chocolate that you've had before that seems quite bitter won't be. When you chew quickly, it releases tannin. It releases all the bitterness in the chocolate. Letting it melt, it's smoother and richer and you get all the flavour. And most excitingly is it releases something into the brain called dopamine, which makes you feel good. And that's how you get addicted to real chocolate. Chocolate's not just an addictive treat. It's an amazing ingredient. Here's my take on which kind to use for what. White chocolate, with its sweet vanilla taste, is perfect used as a dipping or pouring sauce with fresh fruit or frozen berries for a quick dessert. Creamy milk chocolate is great for family-friendly puddings and treats, like quick baked cakes or melt it onto homemade crepes or waffles. Dark chocolate is rich and intense. I like using 70% cocoa stuff. Use it for ice creams that really pack a punch. 100% pure cocoa has a very powerful, intense taste, and only the real chocolate geeks eat it straight. And remember, chocolate isn't just for sweet dishes. For the famous Mexican mole sauce, 
this is the one to grab. Is there anything better than chocolate? They say sex, but I'm just sort of totally overrated. Chocolate is a key ingredient in my favourite sweet fast food dishes, which at their best are always irresistible, instant and utterly satisfying. So when you want an indulgent chocolate hit, my next recipe will be right up your alley. Malt chocolate donuts. Street food is all about satisfying your cravings. These donuts are sweet, sticky and absolutely delicious. First off, we're going to make the dough. Now, this dough takes a bit of time, but it's really exciting. I'm heating all of the milk with the sugar. This yeast, easy to get hold of. And when you make fresh donuts, you need fresh yeast. Adding some of the warm milk to the yeast will activate it, which will help the dough to rise. Just half. Give that a quick whisk. The sugar's dissolved in the milk. The fresh yeast disintegrates instantly. Set the yeast mixture to one side while it does its job. To start the main dough mix, I'm adding half the butter to the remaining milk. That gives the dough a nice silkiness. I want it light. So melt the butter into the milk. Flour into a sieve. That helps to make the dough nice and smooth. And you know what? When you've got a smooth dough, it sort of rises evenly. Add a pinch of salt and two egg yolks. Pour in the warm milk and melted butter. Don't start overmixing it. When you overmix the dough of a donut, it gets really tight. And you're not going to let it aerate. Yeast in. Ooh, nice and warm. I love that smell. Now, I'm looking for a sort of elastic -y texture. Just dropping off the spoon. Nice. Flour the board. Take the dough out. Lovely. Lightly sprinkle, touch more flour, and just pull it over and push in. And every time you're sort of turning it, almost like you're turning the dough into itself. The dough should just sort of relax. And it shouldn't be sticking to your fingers now. It's just nice and pliable. Set that in a nice clean bowl. A little sprinkling of flour in there. So as it starts to rise, it doesn't stick. Cover that with thin film. Leave the dough to rise in a warm place for 60 to 90 minutes until it's doubled in size. This stage is called proving. Now, whilst that's proving, get a pan on. For the chocolate filling or ganache, pour 500 mils of double cream into a saucepan and add honey. Bring the mixture to a gentle boil. Traditionally, we've always put jam in there, but chocolate and donuts, wow, to die for. Add the cream. That give that a good mix. The butter elevates the ganache into a really nice, shiny chocolate coat. Look at that. Whoa. Give it a really nice whisk. So the whisking gives it that aerated texture to the ganache. You're just lightening the load a little bit. Whoa. Nice. Chocolate filling done. Put it in the fridge to cool, then it's time to gently roll out the dough. Just let it roll naturally, about a centimetre and a half in depth. Slice. One. Two. Place them on to your tray and let them rise again. Once the donuts have had 30 to 40 minutes to rise, it's time to shallow fry them in a pan filled one third full with hot vegetable oil. Risen, but look, they're sort of like little pockets of air. Right, here we go. Place these in nice and carefully. Four maximum. If there's too many in the pan, the oil will go cold and the donuts will come out soggy. Turn them over. Beautiful. They're going to come out into some sugar mixed with some malt powder. 50 50. How do you tell they're actually cooked in the center? Tap on top, it should be hollow. In and just sprinkle the malt and the sugar. 
shake off the excess. I get so excited every time I make donuts. Now, look at those beauties. These are delicious, eaten as they are. But the ganache is going to be the icing on the cake. Pipe them back. Peel the bag over your hand. Don't forget to pop the nozzle in. I want the texture. Almost like a little liquid inside. So I'm going to pipe them when they're a little bit warm. Hopefully, you've got that burst of magic. Operation Donut. Lift up the donut. Squeeze, push in, and fill. Just to start seeing that chocolate coming out. And sit that back down. Mmm. Nice. Sit them on there. They've got a little bit heavier, and we all know why. Nice. That one's got my name on it. Oh, that is amazing. Oh. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. Starting with how to do your steak the way you want it. I want to cook my steak rare, so by touching the steak, I want the same feedback as it is on the inside of my thumb. That's rare. As it starts to cook, it gets a lot firmer. Medium is there, semi-firm with a slight resistance. Well done is there. Rare. A great tip for getting meat or fish to cook faster is to score it, which allows the heat to penetrate quicker. This also allows marinades to be absorbed more deeply. For stain-free Tupperware, Coat it thinly with oil, which acts as a barrier between plastic and food. It's so easy to make your own chili sherry to use in quick stir fries or sauces. Take 450 mils of dry sherry, such as fino, and using a funnel, pour into a sterilized bottle. Add five whole Thai chilies, seal with a cork or lid, and leave to infuse for a couple of weeks. My tip for using any discarded chili seeds is plant them to grow yourself some new chili peppers. Plant in an eggshell or seedling trays. Start them indoors and move outside when they're ready. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on. Get cooking.